Hello everyone, welcome back to VTech. In the previous video, I have shown you how to orchestrate and build an ETL pipeline using Azure Data Bricks and Azure Data Factory using PySpark and Spark SQL. In this video, I would like to demonstrate how we can decrease the number of notebooks when compared with the previous video. What I mean by that is, in the previous video, we have different notebooks to perform different kind of ETL transformations because the transformation queries are different for each and every notebook. Here, if you see this notebook for dim order payment info, we have a query which is different from the other notebook. But when you check all the notebooks, the process that we are following is same across all the notebooks. So I thought, why not decrease all the notebooks into one? I, I don't mean like executing all the queries in a single notebook, but a single generic notebook that can be used by any of the notebooks to do to perform the transformation operations and loading the data into the destination location. So and also we have executed all the notebooks including creating data frames and creating global temp views by using a single notebook in which we have used dbutil properties to execute the other notebooks. We will follow the same in the current video too. So let's get started about how I created a single notebook that can be used by any of the transformation logics across. So let's get started. I'll explain you step by step about how I achieved the process of creating a single generic notebook that can be used by any of the transformation operation. Here, if you see, I have two pipelines. The first pipeline is completely responsible for extracting the data from my source, which is a SQL database and dropping the data in the form of files in a data lake storage in Azure. Once I place the files in my data lake storage, which is in my case, it is sales container. And once I have dropped the files, I'll start executing the next pipeline. This pipeline is completely responsible for performing the data uh, notebook operations in Databricks. So in order to achieve my actual goal, I have got all the information like the queries that I yeah, that I'm using to perform the transformation operations, uh, the destination location that I want to place in, the source locations and what else or what are the details that I have needed. I have tried to gather all the information and try to put it in a table. So this is my table, sales SRC dot bricks. And this table contains all the information about my tables and their queries and their destination paths along with the notebook that is having the code. So in my case, there is only one notebook which will execute all these queries one after another sequentially and drop the resultant output in a form of a file in a destination location. So I achieved this task by using a lookup activity, which will retrieve the information that I have in my table, SQL table. If you can see here, I have retrieved all the four records which we have seen in the SSMS in my table. And once I retrieve this data, I started running one of the notebook which will which is responsible for creating the data frames and creating the global temp views and also defining the schemas uh, for my data frames. So let me open this notebook for you. This notebook is same as the one that we have used in the previous video. The only change is in the previous video, we executed this notebook from a single notebook. But here I'm using two different notebooks one is for executing this first notebook, which is responsible for defining and creating the data frames and global temp views. And the second notebook is responsible for executing the main transformation operational notebooks. So if you see this notebook is executing uh, the notebook name sales load initiator. Let me open that for you. So this is my notebook. 
So if you see here, I'm using Databricks uh, DBUtils properties to execute another notebook, which is in my Databricks workspace. And since my notebook named sales load data is in the same folder, I need not give uh, the uh, the complete path. I can give the name of the file direct uh, name of the notebook directly as the first parameter. And my second uh, parameter for my uh, db uh, my dbutils run property is the uh, timeout uh, period for my notebook. So if this if the notebook fails to execute before this timeout period, then uh, it will simply throw the error uh, as a notebook failed, as you can see here. So we are good here. Once this uh, notebook executes the sales load data, which is creating the data frames and all. Once we are good with this, which means we have a global temp views, which is nothing but a virtual table that is available across my Spark session, which can be used across any of the notebooks. So once this is done, I'm using a for each activity. This for each activity is taking the output of this lookup activity. If you can see here, I'm passing the output of this lookup activity to for each activity. So that in each and every iteration, I can use the output of this lookup activity as parameters inside this notebook activity. So what I mean by that is that, let me take you to the notebook so that it is easy to understand. So this is the notebook that I'm calling from this activity. Let me show you. Sales data flow orchestrator. This is my notebook, sales data flow orchestrator. So here I have defined couple of widgets so that I can pass the values which I have retrieved from the lookup activity to this notebook through the data factory parameters. When I pass these parameters to this notebook, during the runtime, those parameters will be initialized to, this, uh, to these widgets and these widgets can be used while running the notebooks. So here, I start in my first cell, I have started running, uh, I, have start, I have used a, a dbutils run property, which will take the first parameter as uh, the notebook name. Since I don't want to pass the parameter uh, of uh, the uh, notebook name statically, I'm passing it dynamically, which we will retrieve in the runtime, which is being passed from the data factory. As you know, the second parameter is timeout period. That is fine. And there is a third parameter that we can pass, which is like uh, if you want to pass some uh, arguments uh, to your notebook or parameters to your notebook, you can specify it uh, in your, as your third parameter. If you have a single parameter, uh, that is fine. Or if you have a number of parameters, you can send it. That's fine. So, and also uh, if you're wondering uh, how to get the uh, get these values or what is this uh, db result which is dot get it's nothing but we since we have defined some widgets we want to use it within this notebook right so in order to use them we will have to use db utils dot widgets dot get property there is also something called as get argument but it is depreciated as of now so get argument is also working same as the get property so if you we can use uh, db utils dot widgets dot get in the brackets, you can specify your uh, widget name, which will contain the required data that you want. But don't forget to view it as a string, which is in single quote or double quotes. Otherwise, you'll get it ended in error. So my first parameter is notebook. Second is my timeout period. And third one is uh, the number of uh, parameters or arguments that I want to pass to my subsequent notebook. The notebook name is dim sales customers. Forgive me, I forgot to change the name of the notebook here. Uh, it is a generic notebook, which is which will be used by uh, all the queries. So, so once this uh, this gets the pro this no this uh, get property gets the notebook value, uh, it will call this notebook. And if you can see here, what are the par arguments or parameters that we are passing in the third position? They will be passed to this notebook in runtime. 
if you see uh, the trans query is the actual SQL query and uh, we are running it using Spark SQL and you can get the property using dbutils.widgets.get uh, and uh, widget name here and uh, uh, it's more of the same uh, it's a generic uh, flow um, what I mean by that is that the flow of all the notebooks is same so I try to minimize all the steps into a single notebook and pass the values that are differing dynamically that is uh, what I did actually and once I'm done uh, I'm trying to return my entity name which I'm passing as a parameter once it is returned it will check at the end if entity name is equal to uh, the name that I have, I have here uh, then it will give notebook is done otherwise it will say dimension has failed because uh, if due to some reason this fails then obviously there is some time out period for this notebook which is 120 if it fails to retrieve some data obviously uh, the notebook will not have a uh, value which will be some garbage or null value when executed uh, it, this condition will be failed and obviously dimension table fail will be the end statement so that is how it works so this is the entire flow or about how i decrease my pipeline and also decrease my notebooks uh, into a very few or a single notebook uh, for performing the etl operations so before uh, uh, okay let's start executing the pipeline and also the notebooks obviously we need not run the notebooks manually once we start uh, executing the pipeline it will invoke the corresponding notebooks and all and complete it automatically let's delete all the files that are present okay uh, once we delete it we'll start uh, running the main pipeline yes and obviously i think our cluster is up already just a quick start sorry okay it's up and running so we are good and uh, that's good i think we are good fine let's close these three windows and let's start executing our main pipeline which will automatically carry the rest of the process for us okay meanwhile let's get to monitoring session and uh, check everything very closely let's observe so uh, the data is being extracted from the source to our intermediate storage it's good it's too fast god so we have the data in our intermediate location which is sales let's refresh it we have the data now it started executing the corresponding pipeline which is responsible for uh, executing the actual ETL transformation process so it started and uh, let's monitor it the second activity is uh, for creating data frames and all I mean the second notebook in the pipeline activity pipelines is uh, creating data frames and everything it is running actually we can check only code or results only okay it will give whether uh, it will give a message whether it has succeeded or failed or if you want to see the code you can give the code for this too it says notebook executed successfully so we are good with this we can close this come back and refresh this so that it will proceed to the next activity which is for each activity it's taking some time fine it got succeeded now coming to for each activity it will start executing each and every notebook let's uh, let's observe notebooks one after the another open this okay uh, i think it started running okay let's open this notebook let's check if you see what is the result for this if you see the first notebook is a customer i mean it is uh, taking the query and uh, producing some results 
okay oh the notebook got completed we are good <laughs> we are done with one uh, one table i guess it's too fast okay the second table has started i think it is executing sequentially good this is also done cool let's come to the third yes please leave a comment if you have any doubt at any point of time so it's executing it is saying waiting cluster to start but the previous notebooks were fine right okay let's set up results only which is very easy oh projects are done we are good again now the last one which shouldn't take much time has started this is complete we are good so let's come back to our destination location let's refresh this yes we have the data so uh, this is how it's done i hope uh, you liked the video please leave a comment if you have any doubt uh, if you like it please give a thumbs up please subscribe to my channel